Brilliant. It's Carl here from Games, Brains and a Headbanging Life. GBH Bar okay. for short. Thanks for having um, me. Talk from Kickass Rock and Roll Band to give you a very simplified version of what Lucifer Star Machine sound like to us. Tor, how are you doing? Um, yeah, not too bad, thank you. Um, well, we sound like, um, I'd say if you want to compare it with bands, like uh, you take the Ramones, you take the Misfits, you take um, early Turbo Negro. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much sums us up and stuff, you know. It's like in your face rock and roll with a no bullshit attitude. It really is, it really <laughs> is. Um, how have you been holding up during global pandemic ah uh, well you gotta cope like you know like everyone um what what it is basically um that we had it was bad luck for us obviously because we released uh, the album right in the middle of uh, of the pandemic and stuff you know so it was released in in april um and it was a massive delay with uh, the release in america and overseas altogether um, I think in America it only came out now, or it's it's uh, it's still not out. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Mm. So that's mm. obviously a uh, bit shit for us and stuff. And now obviously we had to cancel all the shows. We were completely booked out this year. Um, we would have toured everywhere. We would have played the UK as well in September. Um, uh, but that's you know, yeah, we don't we're not gonna play anywhere. I reckon. Yeah, unfortunately, you're far from alone in that case, but it doesn't change how frustrating, disappointing all of it is. Yeah. Um, was there ever kind of any consideration that you might kind of just hold the album back until uh, you still see where things were heading? Uh, not, not, not really. Uh, we, we never discussed it and stuff. And now it was scheduled for the date and stuff. Um, and I think... When when it happened, you know, um, I think it, it was too late to call it off, really, you know. And um, well, it was released and stuff, and and we just went for it. And the thing is, the good thing is, you know, we got uh, rave uh, review, reviews everywhere. Um, the album was really well received and stuff. Um, yeah, the the only bad thing is obviously we, we can't go out and promote the album uh, by playing gigs. And, you know, that's obviously the bad thing. But that, uh, hopefully, you know. Once uh, this shit show is over and stuff, we'll we'll be back on the road. You talk about those <laughs> road reviews. Were you surprised that you got such widely positive reviews? Considering as well, obviously it's your fourth album. It's not your first um, rodeo. Well, not not at all, really. I mean, obviously, you know, if you if you stand behind what you do and and stuff, you know, you expect having uh, good reviews and stuff. And we know this is the best thing we've we've done so far. I know we've been going for a while and stuff, you know, but with uh, previous albums, I think I'm I'm pretty happy with with Rock and Roll Martyrs, which which was the one before. Mm. But the first two albums and stuff, you know. Um, uh, it, 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 they weren't recorded in ideal situations and stuff, you know. And uh, um, I think um, we we weren't as good as musicians back then and stuff. For now, and uh, I don't know, man. Look, look, looking back at it and stuff, for now, I would have done a lot of things differently. Rock and Martyrs, I think, uh, for what it was, it is a good album and stuff. It was a it was a completely different approach. Uh, like like on the new one, on Rock and Martyrs and stuff, it was like uh, yeah punk rock approach basically we went to the rehearsal studios and i um um rehearsed the songs uh, wrote the songs together in the studio and stuff and then basically like that you know we went in the, in the recording studio and recorded them um on like like garage punk basically and stuff you know and on uh, on the new album on, on devil's breath it was a different approach and stuff we we sent recordings uh, to each other like home recordings and stuff and, and wrote the songs like that and then really like uh, put a lot of effort in, into the whole thing and stuff you know changed bits here and there and then listened back to it and stuff so it took a long long time to actually get one song finished mm. but um mm. it was definitely worth it and stuff because it's uh, um I don't know, there's a lot more thought into it than on, on pre uh, previous stuff we've done, you know? So it's almost like you've been trying to find the perfect way of, I guess, that works for you as a unit, um, how you record and how you uh, share ideas. Um, yeah. Do you think you found I mean, it? Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. I mean, the thing is, you know, um, the way why, we, why we've done it that way is because we, we all live quite far apart, you know? It's like... Back then, you know, when we were a London band, um, we all lived obviously in London and we rehearsed in London and stuff. So that's 
how you you write as a band you know obviously in the rehearsal room and stuff you know but uh, we had to find a different way because we live uh, kind of like far apart and stuff and you know and, and, and we tried this by basically sending stuff to each other via a whatsapp um you know recording with, with uh, the garage band program and stuff and uh i'm getting some riffs and stuff i'm gonna sing some stuff over it so yeah man i think it really worked and um i think it's actually uh, looking at this, it, it's a better way uh, to write songs like that. So we're going to do the same thing right now. Uh, we're writing basically the, the follow-up already because, you know, what else we're going to do? You know, we're, we're sitting at home and so we can't do anything. So, yeah, might as well just write new songs. And I think, yeah, it's it's um, it's a good idea doing it that way and stuff, and uh, we'll, we'll keep doing it. If it's working for you, that's fantastic. fantastic. Cause it's only something you can learn through experience and time, really. Yeah. Um, from what I've been reading, uh, music and tattooing seems to be the two major components that make up you. Um, yeah. Do they elect the same level of passion from you? But yeah, obviously. I mean, if if uh, if you're tattoos and stuff, you know, you have to have the passion in order to do it and stuff. You know, um, it's like with everything. You know, if if you got passion stuff, you deliver good work and stuff. And then it's it's my job. So uh, yeah, I'm into it. I mean, my um, my main passion is definitely music because i've been doing it for longer than tattooing uh but that doesn't mean you know i'm, I'm holding back on tattooing and I'm, I'm still putting a lot of effort into it and stuff and you know, how to 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 get better every time and stuff because you you, you always can learn more things and stuff you know, and, and, and get better with everything you do with music with tattooing and stuff you know um but yeah my main passion is definitely music i mean uh, the first band that i had when i was 14 and stuff you know and then i've I've been in bands ever since, you know, and uh, Lucy of Astonishing is now going for, for 18 years, I think, or something like that. It's an incredible man. Yeah, it is, man. You know, who would have thought that when I, when I, when I formed the band that, that long ago? But yeah, <laughs> man, it's, uh, it's still fun. Actually, I'm having fun again, you know, because there was a time uh, when I uh, didn't have the right people in the band. And uh, sometimes it was very stressful and stuff, you know, because you had to watch what you say because... Uh, you know, uh, he, he got it like uh, he got. They they didn't understand the way I meant it and stuff. And, and there was always a bit of fighting and stuff. And and then and I, I know it's you know how it is, man. You got the wrong uh, people in the band. You know, it's just not going to work out and stuff. Even that they were good musicians and stuff. Um, I don't know. At the end of the day, uh, we had to part and had a lot of musicians in in the band since I started. But now actually, I got a solid lineup, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's really really cool to work with these guys uh, um, really cool guys good musicians and stuff and uh, you know it's it's fun again well it's been almost three months now since the release of the devil's breath here in the uk yeah. um when you look at the wider pitch you say potentially not in america um is there one particular territory or country that you've thought wow they're really getting it i can't really you mean just that by the reviews we had? Uh, yeah, reviews, fan reactions on your f social media, stuff like that. Um, I can't really say that would have been one particular country, you know. Um, I mean, the Americans like it. I noticed that. Um, yeah, we had good reviews everywhere. We had like, yeah, UK, we had really good reviews and stuff, you know. Um, funnily enough, we didn't have that many reviews at all from uh, from Scandinavia, uh, even though our record label is from, from Sweden. Mm. Um, that, that's something that, that surprised me. So maybe they don't have that many, I don't know, magazines or, or sites or whatever who review stuff. I have no idea. But um, yeah, I mean, Germany, obviously, I think that there's a there's a big rock and roll scene. We had, we had uh, lots of reviews there, good ones and stuff. Yeah, uh, I'd say uh, Germany, UK and, and, and America. Three very, very important territories. Um, you're crossing a lot of boundaries with the album. We can describe it as punk-infused rock as much as you want, but it's got a hell of a lot more influences buried amongst it. You'll pick things out. You'll even pick bits of metal influences here and there. Um, is that something you're consciously aware of? Well, the thing is, you now we, we all listen to um, different kinds of music and stuff, you know? And I think it's, uh, as a musician, that's, that's the right thing to do, because if you... 
uh, just listen to one one type of music and stuff, or, or you, you just want to sound like your favorite band, just uh, end up sounding like a bad copy, you know? Yeah. So um, yeah. I think it's always good to have like uh, different influences, you know? I mean, uh, I listen to whatever, I listen to North and Soul, I listen to country, I listen to uh, punk rock, obviously, you know, rockabilly, um, metal, whatever, man, whatever, whatever I like. I, mean, I think there's only good and bad music and stuff, you know? So, um, yeah, and obviously, if you listen to a lot of stuff, you know, you can take influence from here and there. We got uh, country influences on the album, uh, which are maybe not that apparent and stuff, you know, but um, mm. some of the stuff, if you play it acoustically, like the last song, obviously, that's a bit more obvious and stuff, you know, that the title song is just like country. But uh, even like in, in some of the other songs and stuff, um, for the listener, it might not be that apparent and stuff, but um, yeah, we, we take influences from from various genres, like do warp as well, you know, um like like the misfits obviously to mm -hmm. to you know um yeah man but i think that's that's the, uh, the best way to to write music well certainly gives you a more balanced sound um without straying too far too far away from I yeah know, obviously core. it had you still have to sound like like a band and not like whatever they, they know what they want you know and i think um we, we achieved that you know you you can still here, yeah, that's a band, and they, they 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 found the sound, and they know what they want. So it's not like uh, whatever, man. It's like um, you know, yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's instantly recognizable if you know your previous album and you say even your earlier work. It's instantly recognizable as a Lucifer Star Machine album. It's just yeah. development. You're growing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, our work is incredibly striking. It kind of jumps off the shelf at you. Um, whose mm. idea was that? Well, the idea was uh, was mine to have it like that. You know, um, I really wanted to have a, a striking album cover. Um, um, and uh, that that guy who did it is is like from Poland, uh, uh, Lukas uh, Jaszak, and uh, he's done the first uh, the the album on the first uh, the cover on the first album and on the second album. Um, on the third album, I did it myself, and then you know, and I went back to him because. I didn't want to have like a tattoo like cover like on Rock and Roll Martyrs or some, something like but what we wanted you know um, um, Famous Monsters of Filmland um, magazines yep. from the film yeah. and stuff yeah and that was the idea and stuff you know because uh, maybe we're not a horror punk band but we do have like horror influences and, and, and stuff you know and I'm, I'm a big horror fan so I wanted to have uh, like a cover like that basically you know like an iconic cover like a, like a magazine cover basically and stuff you know and that, that was the idea behind it yeah, that's yeah. amazing you say that because yeah. it conjured up an image for me of like an 80s VHS cover yeah, of a trashy horror movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're a big horror fan then, yeah? Yeah, pretty much. What, what do you enjoy in regards to modern horror? Modern horror? Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Where does modern horror start? Well, like, let's say the period of paranormal activity, so 2006 to now. Okay. Um, when, when was a, a Serbian film? Was it earlier? Ooh, no, I it was, that might be no, that was, it was later, wasn't it? Yeah. A little bit later, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do like when it comes to horror, really crude and horrible stuff, you know, like uh, a Serbian film, even it's like, that's hardcore, because that's, I mean, uh, you know, if, if you, if you, I've been into horror all my life and stuff, and now when I watch movies, um, I hardly get shocked anymore, and, and that was a movie that really shocked me, mm. uh, have, have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that one, and uh, A Human Centipede 2. Uh, oh, uh, the second one, yeah. The second, second one, yeah, yeah. That is like horrible. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's that stuff, you know. And um, do you know uh, Mother? Yep. I mean, there's, there's two two films and stuff with, with the name. But um, I mean, uh, it's Darren... from the guy who, who did um, uh, Black Swan. Uh, same, Darren Afkonski? Huh? Is it Darren, yeah, Darren of Konsky? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and he did a film called Mother. I think that was really strong. Yeah, there's some very unique uh, taste there. You are right. When you grow up watching horror and spend it watching your life, become desensitized. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned those uh, Serbian tale and Human Centipede too. Um, <laughs> I'm having flashbacks of those movies now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So is it something? I mean, when, I, when I saw a Serbian film and stuff, and I was like, oh, fuck, man, I, I'm never going to watch it again, you know? And I saw it three times, and then the third time it was already a bit funny because yeah. it's just so over the top and stuff, you can't really take it seriously, man, you know? So. It's like going back and watching the video nasties of the 80s, yeah, the yeah. ones that were banned. I mean, and, uh, yeah, it really tame now, man. Every, everything is like more horrible on TV now. Yeah, well, yeah, back back then, man, it's like uh, ridiculous. Man, back then we went to uh, we went to Holland and get all the pirate copies because uh, some of the stuff was banned, obviously in Germany as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. We were doing a film review for a movie that is supposedly still banned in Germany. It's called Brain Dead, Peter Jackson. That wasn't banned. Really? No. Oh, I, it's... I don't think that was banned. Oh, it's. St- from what I saw, it was listed as not being allowed to be shown in Germany. I guess it must be wrong then. Yeah, but I, I, I rented it back then on, on uh, yeah, Jazz or DVD, was, I, I can't remember. But that, yeah, no, I think that, that wasn't banned. If you I mean, rented it, 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 Evil, it Evil Dead was banned when it came out. I mean, it like, was, well, yeah. they released it and then, then they, they, they banned it and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so from the old movies, it's uh, Evil Dead, obviously, Reanimator, Brain Dead. I think these are the, these are the cool ones. Is there anything that scared you as a sort of youngster that you kind of took into your later life um, that doesn't necessarily scare you now, but I guess imprinted itself on you? No. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> not, not, not really, man. I, I was always like, I don't know, man. I, I was drawn uh, to horror at an early age and stuff. And I when I saw um, uh, horror of Dracula on uh, on TV uh, as a kid, they, they showed it in, in the morning uh, when I came home from 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 school, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and I was yeah. I don't know. I was I was into horror ever since and stuff and my first band my, my, my first favorite band was kiss you know because they had the image you know it was a bit like horror as well gene simmons and that and i saw i saw that record cover you know i was like yeah fuck man you know that's obviously the the best band ever to walk the earth so yeah <laughs> brilliant brilliant so does your horror love influence um your tattooing side more than say the music um yeah um Obviously, the stuff I'd like to tattoo would be more like that, you know what I mean? But uh, as a tattooist, you know, um, it's customer service. So um, when people come in and they want uh, an affinity sign and stuff, you know, you, you try to talk them out of it. But if they still want it, you got to tattoo it, you know? So, you know, so, yeah, don't get an affinity sign. Get a monkey with spider heads and stuff, you know? But um, <laughs> not everyone is up for that. I love it. Um, I'm pretty heavily tattooed myself, and I always wanted my body to be kind of a life story of what I've loved and influenced and so on. Yeah, that's cool, man. What about yours? Um, are many of yours personal to you? Um, no. And I mean, it depends. I've got some, some tattoos that are personal. Some uh, are just, you know, I got tattooed because I like the design and stuff, and mm-hmm. I, actually most of them, you know. For that, no, oh, that looks fucking cool, man. I'm, I'm going to have that. And uh, But the thing is, um, I think not every tattoo has to mean something, you know, because um, when, when you look at a tattoo, you remember the time when you got it anyway. You remember, you know, what happened there. You remember maybe you got it by what happened at the times, uh, who you were with and stuff, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man. That's, it's like, uh, that's like your, own, it, your own personal diary anyway. Even the tattoo itself doesn't mean anything. It, it, it does mean something to you. Any regrets? <laughs> Well, yeah, that uh, the regrets are tattooed over already. So, um, yeah, man, uh, I started with tribal, you know, so um, they, they had to be gone. And the last thing I want to ask you about tattoo is what advice would you give to someone who's come to you and said, look, I want to get my first tattoo, but I don't really know what I want? Uh, get a skull. You can't get wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> so... I gather at this stage for Lucifer Star Machine, you're just desperate to kind of get out now and play yeah. live. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I, but I don't know, man. I think this year, um, I don't have high hopes, you know. Um, well, the, the UK sh- shows are not cancelled yet, but I mean, that's September, so I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, we would have played Spain in uh, September as well. Uh, we just rescheduled that for next year. And uh, yeah, then then there's a lot of uh, German shows, and uh, I think in in Den- Denmark we've got one. So we, we're gonna see when these these shows are like uh, at, uh, October and stuff. We don't we know we don't know what's gonna happen then. But I don't wanna wanna play shows, you know. 
uh, where you go, and then there's uh, people have to sit on chairs with like with two meters uh, in between them and stuff. I mean, what the fuck? You know, I'd rather stay at home, man. You know, uh, than doing that. It's it's same thing. Work, no, it's not gonna work. The same thing with uh, I know playing live, recording it, and uh, um, you know, so you can watch it at home on your laptop, man. Um, I don't know. I think that's no fun. You know, we can think about that maybe next year when when we still have the same problem. Yeah, but mm. right now, we just gotta wait, write songs and stuff, and uh, you know, and hope this shit show is over soon. Well, you're such a high energy <laughs> band as well. Um, people aren't moving at your show because they can't social distancing. Yeah, exactly. It's not gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. So. The last thing I've got for you then is um, in regards to being active on social media and the issues it brings and so on, particularly during this lockdown period. You already mentioned about live streams and not really wanting to do them. Um, yeah. Is this something you enjoy overall, though, interaction on social media, considering how much of you have to do? uh enjoy i don't know man i mean obviously you have to do it yeah like like you said and stuff you know without social media i mean obviously you have to be in touch with your fans and i, I do enjoy that being in touch with the fans but uh, sometimes you have to do stuff which which isn't fun you know um but i do enjoy uh interviews and stuff and that's that's a different thing you know, talking to somebody um doing, doing live interviews i think is a lot better than uh, uh, interviews in writing because you have to write all this shit down and stuff it's a lot quicker like, like that you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i agree i much prefer this as well <laughs> i don't have to do it um tor i'll let you get on then much appreciated for your time oh, cool. nice one Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?